Welcome to the segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound brought to you by Be Simply. Sometimes my hair's all right, I dwell on my past lives, act like I'm transcending. But I gotta do my best to do a moment. being here today and today during this dharma talk as we lead into meditation and then sound we are going to connect to inspiration and how that can serve as an ignition of your inner fire and activate you to realign and uh, recalibrate as the moon was welcoming us to do with our destiny and so we have collectively been in this hoovering I'll use that word hoover but not in the narcissistic way uh, moment on planet earth where we keep circling LAX for any of those of you that have flown into LAX sometimes that happens you have to circle before you're given clearance to land well this metaphor right now is it's time to land it's time to move forward and to collectively get inspired whether we're meeting adversity, whether we're meeting new conceptual ideas and inceptions, this is that moment to start looking beyond suffering as an obstacle and look at it as a seed of inspiration. And so when one has an obstacle, it's it's an opportunity to figure something out and to find a solution. So if I use the the metaphor of even like a 911 situation. And in that moment, there are only solutions, solutions being accessed. So to the point is that one can get inspiration in that moment, because they're right there in the present moment. And if they're really focused and in flow, they will find the solutions, or they'll remember the tools within them to assist in that situation. Now, outside of those kind of situations, we have just life that we are collectively weaving together for our future and the generations to come. And so we have a responsibility, if you so do choose, to return to that state of inspiration, to return to that state of figuring stuff out. And it's interesting when you have a real like simple life you start getting inspired by simple things you know and when I take groups um, or individuals through a longer like a 21 day uh, reboot and nourishment uh, the certain things are simplified some might say it feels a little busier however with that simple palette to work with one can get inspired by uh the ingredients by having the space just to focus on self. So if we didn't have all these distractions, meaning these boxes, we have the opportunity to feel into and have conversations with one another, to bounce ideas off each other, uh, to have meals with one another. And then from there, taking that information and seeing where it nourishes us and where it feeds us. We have become a society, especially in Western cultures, where we are addicted and attached to suffering and the labels that we can give it. And so the more that you reinforce that from a neuroplasticity, your physical body starts to adopt that programming. Your physical body is this vessel to transport your spirit, your essence. So the more that you program it, the more that you're going to reinforce it and you're going to stay stay in that frequency. You're going to stay in that mindset. You're going to stay in that state of being and you're going to keep circling around with this energy. Now, this could also, not could, it does have to do with your karma in this lifetime. And so Ultimately, karma is this opportunity to transform, to reconcile uh, something that 
wasn't learned in the past and also to uh, acknowledge where you have great fortune and to utilize that great fortune wisely, generously towards others and then wisely with self. Uh, Because if one just is uh, completely non-aware when they're in good fortune and uh, does not see the value of expressing gratitude and kind of takes it for granted, uh, that can quickly dissipate. So it's, it's important to really think about how can I replenish my inspiration? How can I in, replenish that divine spark within me so that I can continue to receive and serve in this world and pave a way to the future? And so when we're in an inspired state, this is that opportunity to really uh, welcome in the divine and allow it to guide us and help our other senses uh, open up to listen, see, feel, hear beyond sometimes the physical realm. And then we bring it into the granular, into the physical realm and work with it. And so what I find interesting when we're using a tool like this technology, the danger of that is that it can get one really quickly locked into what we know as an algorithm. And if one is not diligent about, you know, cleansing self of the technology, reprogramming the technology to serve your divine inspiration, it's a tool. It it is not meant to, by human standards, govern you. And the less you use this tool, the more that you're going to be able to connect to nature and its divine spark and its divine inspiration, and it will intersect you with your destiny. And so this coding that's in the universe, but also on this planet, there's an electromagnetic infeed for each and every one of you. There are these moments, and in Tibetan Buddhism, it would be called Uh, is referred to when one is retrieving or remembering a teaching that they held before here is a terma. They'll they'll cross its path and it's an electromagnetic infeed, almost like if you were in a pinball machine and you were that ball and you rolled and found the hole. And right then when that ball connected to that hole, that would be you connecting to that electromagnetic infeed and poof, uh, you'll get another opportunity to play the game a little bit further. But in um, a spiritual sense, you'll retrieve that teaching and that remembrance so that you can utilize that in this moment here on planet Earth. And, you know, we're constantly in the state of adaption and change based on perception and based on where we decide that we want our attention to be. And so this is really important because it's not to ignore what's happening on. And as I stated in the beginning, when we're met with adversity, this is that moment to use this divine spark, this inspiration to propel us forward with solutions that will will ultimately create better practices for here on planet Earth and will ultimately create uh, businesses and industries that will ensure that we don't have to do this again. So many times over, uh, people became complacent and felt powerless. But each one of you has this divine spark, has this divine inspiration, and holds a different set of cards, meaning that you have tools and gifts within you that are to serve all. And this isn't really meant to be like, you know, people think of the metaphysical skills, we'll call them, as gifts in a way that makes one special. Your your suit that you're in, your physical body, is designed with you to access these senses. However, we become distracted and don't realize how to activate those se- those senses. It's kind of like giving yourself an upgrade, and it's not so much about downloading anything. It's just activating the system so that you can utilize all those skills. However, these, this is something earned over several lifetimes. And based on that essence, that's you, you will see if you unlock those skills. 
the way they ha- start to happen a little bit more rapidly is when we get away from technology, when we get into nature and away from all these infeeds that circumvent you from accessing those points. So what you can do in this moment to really see if your divine spark is activated is spend a, a little bit more time daily in nature. The second is to spend a lot more time pen to paper or stick to sand or hands to clay, uh, hands to weaving, anything that's actually moving the hands and uh, working with something that you enjoy. It could be cooking, it could be art, it could be being a mechanic, it could be a surgeon, it could be a farmer, whatever it is, move the hands in the physical world and eliminate the subtraction. This is one of the best teachings that I've received from mother nature that stays, I would say it is the best. I don't know. (laughs) She might correct me, but is to subtract. So take away things that distract you from your divine spark. And so that's personal to each and every one of you. But if you right now in this moment are not full of life, meaning full of your full potential, unlocking that which is already within you, so that you can utilize that on a daily basis, then that aspect of a self is uh, being limited. And so you have to potentially step back and say, where am I limiting myself? Now, this might be reflective in relationships, in the way that you're doing business. This might be reflective in a lot of things. However, Uh, it really comes to you. And so I'll equate it to if I'm making a meal in the kitchen, I will take the time to make sure that I have the ingredients that I want to serve myself and others and that I harmonize with that experience of making that meal for someone or myself or, or a group of people or people outside of my home. And when I harmonize with that, there's, there's nothing limiting me at all. I am inspired. I'm in this very sacred space and I create from that deep divine love. And so each day we have this opportunity to stay in that space, even when we have adversity. And the other part I've shared before here, but I'll share again is that when we are in that flow, it is like unplugging, not like it is unplugging basically from the energies that pull you down, that limit you externally and internally. So when we clean out the closet, so to speak, then you have this opportunity to free yourself of those confines and just witness when those energies come in and try to stop you, to inhibit you, to block you. And rather than give them your attention, you can choose to stay focused and move forward. Similar to an athlete when they're uh, maybe playing a game, running a race, whatever it might be, they stay focused. If they lose sight, they will create a downfall for themselves and others in the activity they're participating in. Similar if you're baking a cake and you start slamming things, that cake's going to fall. So right now, there are energies trying to pull at us left, right, and center. And I encourage each and every one of you, if you can step up and serve and be a resource and an inspiration for how to move beyond the obstacle that presents itself, that energy will eventually go away and try to feed off someone or something else. And eventually from there, that energy will dissipate completely from this planet. So we are in that moment where we, we want to stay inspired, full of energy and moving forward. So after you get through this meditation today and sound, I encourage you to take some moments and take some inventory of where you've lost some of that 
inspiration in your life where you've lost uh, this energy activation from within. And then as you evaluate that, see what is ready to be subtracted, what can make your life simpler. And uh, you might notice sometimes when you start to have this level of subtraction, you will notice maybe a little push-pull because it's almost like you're addicted to that thing that doesn't serve you or isn't in alignment with you. So then from there, it's about determining, hey, like what does that look like for me? What what uh, does it look like if I bring this aspect of my life into alignment so it serves me versus diminishes me? Or it might mean that you literally are removing things from your life that don't serve right now. They may circle back around someday, yet just letting those things be. So I want to invite you to come into that inspired state, come into that blissful state of being. And then you have this wonderment and possibility in and around you. And also you will have a conviction because when each one of us is building from that state, we start to be focused on getting that finished. Like an athlete that's training for a event, they are focused on that. There's nothing else obstructing them. They may may have their own inner obstructions, but the goal is there. And if they do have anything that happens to the mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual body, they more than likely have the tools that they reinforce to bring them back to center. This is true with so many different examples. So with each one of you, I encourage you to be in that state. And the other cool thing that happens when we're in this state is it's kind of like a no BS zone. And so when you're in this no BS zone, there all of a sudden it weeds out all these other things that aren't necessarily the distractions, but maybe you give a little bit of time to. And a lot of times that's what I call the BS zone where, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I'll contemplate that. I'll think about that. Or, oh, I'll give you time, but really you're full of it. And those little bits, those little movements, when we give um, too much space to the BS around us, it can quickly be a slippery slope. So the cool thing is when you're in this inspired state, you tend to have less uh, space for any of that. Uh, and then the other sweet spot is that your cup, it flows over. So when you're inspired, when you're happy, when you're excited, other people feel that too. And this doesn't mean to fake this. This means to authentically hold a practice for yourself that you stay in this uh, resonance. And that will require uh awareness on how to keep your mental state of being well, your physical state of being well, your emotional state of being well, and your spiritual state of being well. And all those will cooperate for your divine spark to lead you as a innovator, a creator, and a problem solver to create beautiful, beautiful things for our children, our grandchildren, and many generations to come. So with that being said, I want to welcome each and every one of you, no matter where you're at in this moment, even if you're, you're in a state that's not elevated right now, I welcome you to surrender to that. And as we breathe in and out, I welcome you just to exhale anything out that is encumbering your state of being. Release that it doesn't serve. Reset your compass to where you want to live from. So take a nice gentle breath in and exhale out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Another one, inhale, and exhale, and 
Good. And then gently from there, I just welcome you to breathe in and out. And as you're breathing, just locate your natural rhythm. And from an upright seated position, I just welcome you to follow that breath, to stay connected to your breath. And if the mind wanders, bring it back to observing that breath. Taking another deep breath in. And out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Good. One more inhale. And exhale.
wait, it cannot be held back. The sun's not falling down. Wait, it cannot be held back. The sun's not falling
Taking a soft, gentle breath in and out of your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual being. And then gently, without staying where your presence is, just recline into Shavasana, corpse pose, a.k.a. prone position on your back. Alternatively, you can curl up into the fetal position on the right or left side. And then gently from there, reconnect to your natural breathing pattern. Allow that to be your focal point as you lead into and receive these sound transmissions.
So I want to gently welcome you to breathe into your heart center. Gently breathe in and out. Again, inhale. And exhale. Good. One more inhale. And exhale. Good. And then gently from there. Just welcoming you to move your fingers and toes. Good. And then gently as you bring your awareness back to my voice. Just gently being with all aspects of yourself. And I welcome you as we sign out um, to stay here a little bit longer. One, I'm going to play Sunbeam by Kadri Scott and you know this divine spark this inspiration comes from the sun and the exchange between the sun and here and this is why many cultures had great reverence for the sun uh, because it gives us life it gives us the cycle that feeds daily and then the dance between that yang energy, father energy, to the yin, feminine energy of the earth. It creates these masterpieces everywhere. I mean, if inspired, go take a walk and look at all the little bugs and the flowers and the plants. Uh, it's, it's amazing and can keep you entertained for years and years Eternity, really, I feel. So as you come out of the space today, I encourage you just to take that inventory and reconnect to the things that inspire you internally. And if inspired, make a commitment to self to feed yourself daily with those inspirations and utilize that inspiration to keep your spark going and to serve the world with that energy. It's an exciting time. Remember that you matter. That which you have within you matters and that you're not alone. Until next time, this is Suzanne signing out with a full heart, a soft gaze, a deep bow, and a namaste. Be simply. Such as the
For listening, I want to thank Kadri Scott, Dante Marino, Random Rab, and the heavens above for supporting this segment of Soul, Silence, and Sound. <laughs>